Okay, so here's just a very, very quick update video to add to this existing video. Okay, this is just in light of current, uh, not just changes, but from feedback from me, Bosch. Um, these are things that are not necessarily in the guidance or in the example risk assessment. Um, however, people have, have, you know, they've, they've not passed the risk assessment for these reasons. Uh, so I just need to highlight some very important things. Also things that, that we do make clear, but some people still miss them. Okay, so let me just uh, very quickly mention three things. Um, this video will be played at the beginning and the end of this video. So don't worry, if you've not watched um, uh, the, the, this, the full video that you're just about to watch, then don't worry. Um, if you don't understand what this means yet, you can, this will be played again at the end, okay? In the risk assessment, I'll show you a visual as well, okay? But in the risk assessment, uh, we're going to avoid using the term immediate when we're looking at control measures, okay? I'll explain that in a second. Uh, when you're allocating um, a control measure to a person within the organisation for them to you know, to, to, to sign off and or to ensure that the control measure is, is implemented, make sure it's, if you can, make sure it's not the same person. Uh, try and vary, vary the person. Okay, and I'll explain that in a second. And avoid using the term periodic. Okay, so let me just very quickly show you. Uh, I'll open up NC Skills example. Okay, um, I've left it with the error in it on purpose. Okay. Because um, in this next video that you're just about to watch, which just plays continuously from this one, you will see the the slight errors, okay, which I'll pick up now. It never used to be an issue, but now Nibosh, um, some markers can be a bit funny about it. And, and uh, we, we did appeal, we did pass, the students did get, gain a pass, but we don't want that delay uh, for students to get results. So if you can, not hotel manager for every single responsibility, okay? Um, facilities manager, general manager, for example. Try and vary it if you can, if you have uh, a few staff in your organization, okay? Then we have a sliding scale, okay? Make it clear, nice and clear. Don't write two or three months, just write down, you know, this is what you've decided as your time scale. So I'll scroll down, and what I don't want to see is this immediately, okay? Even if you put five hours down or 10 hours or one day, then try and avoid using the term immediately, okay? Uh, and this column here, okay? Let me just see, okay? So regular weekly documented cleaning to be carried out, okay? Weekly. So this is how often you want it done, and it will start in three weeks' time, okay? Don't write weekly in here. The weekly bit needs to go in here, or daily, or monthly. This is how often, okay? Don't type in periodic documented cleaning to be carried out. What does periodic mean? Well, you need to say how often it needs to be, okay? Periodic is too vague. If somebody is going to read this risk assessment, the hotel manager needs to ensure this is in place. We've not told them how often you want them to do it. Okay. Uh, hopefully it's been agreed. You, know, you consult with managers and you agree this together. Okay. That's just uh, three very, very important things that uh, to take note of. Thank you very much. Okay. So welcome to the, the next video. The first video you watched was basically the introduction to the NG2 risk assessment. Now we are going to cover the actual, the first step. Okay, and we're going to look at completing part two of the risk assessment. We're going to we're going to leave part one until after part two. Strange, but it, it makes a bit more sense. Um, and once we, it's easier to do part two first. Okay, so just to briefly run through the steps again. Okay, and the order that you're going to do the risk assessment, and I'll, I'll repeat this for each video. Okay, we'll do a, a separate video for each each one of these. Okay. So complete the inspection, which we covered during the last video, which was the introduction video. Then for this step, it will be to complete the risk assessment part two. Okay, that's why I've highlighted it in red. This is the what this video relates to. Then we are going to complete risk assessment part one, and there'll be a video for that. You watch that video after the part two video. Okay, then complete risk assessments part three and then risk assessments parts four. 
okay and we'll do them in that that order okay uh, and there'll be separate videos for each okay we'll just break it down for yourself don't try and watch it all once and then try and do it from memory you can watch it all once if you want but remember for before you complete each part you make sure you watch the video again that's relevant to it to it and have the guidance to hand okay uh, and I'll briefly briefly show you the guidance again in a second, specifically uh, relating to part two. Okay. Uh, the very final step will be a proof check, checking your risk assessment against the guidance. Watch the videos again and compare it against the example. If you fail to do this, you'll miss you'll miss something. Uh, and with the risk assessment, you're, it's not scored out of 100. It's not, you know, 20 out of 100 or 50 out of 100. It's simply a pass or a fail. So if you miss one little thing out and it's and the boss require that one little thing, the whole thing pass, it fails. Okay. Uh, obviously, when you do come to resubmit, uh, reset, you'll still have to pay a reset fee, uh, which, which Nibosh will charge. And uh, But you only need to change the, the part that you actually got wrong. Okay, you don't need to redo a full new risk assessment. Okay, but hopefully we don't need to worry about that at the moment. That's, you know, uh, the key thing is if you follow this guidance, there's no reason why you shouldn't pass. Okay, there we go. So let me just open up that document that I was talking about called the guidance. Okay, so here is the guidance again, which I showed you briefly in the last video. Okay, let me just skip straight on to part two of the risk assessment process. Okay, page seven. Make sure you, you've opened this at the same time. Okay, in the last video, we meant introduction video, we mentioned about how many categories you need, hazard categories, and how many hazards you need. Okay, and some of you might, be, might still be thinking, I don't get it. What's the difference between a hazard and a hazard category? Okay, so in your book, you will have all these hazard categories, yeah? Think of it as hazard types, yeah? It's like subjects in your book, yeah? There's a full element on fire, for example, electricity, work equipment, machinery, okay? Um, these are all what we call hazard categories or hazard types, okay? You need five of these as a minimum. As I say in the previous video, uh, Try for eight. To be honest, you probably will end up with maybe eight, nine, or ten quite naturally. Yeah, because you know, a lot of companies you, you'll be dealing with fire issues, electricity, hazardous substances, for example. Okay. So this is what we call hazard categories. Okay, you've got I think there's about twenty here from I think when I counted that a few weeks ago, it was about around about twenty categories. You only need five. Okay. Um and, and with these ten hazards that you need. You take the hazard, these 10 hazards from the category, okay? So, example, the fire category, okay? Some examples of fire hazards within that category could be, we'll just, we'll use three examples, okay? So, three hazards from the fire category, okay? So, fire extinguishers missing, okay? That's one hazard, okay? Within the fire hazard category, yeah? Locked fire exits, maybe chains closed, yeah, and combustible material stored in uh, the escape route next to the fire door, for example. That's three hazards within the ha the fire category. Okay, so that's you. You've already got three hazards, and you've you've signed off one category. So now you, all you need is seven hazards in four categories. Okay. So that's that's how it works basically. So let's go for hazard sub hazardous substances. Okay. So that could be that's basically a second hazard type. The first one fire, second one hazardous substances. Okay. And it could be a chemical stored flammable liquid, yeah, or any other chemical toxic toxic uh, substance, for example, stored um, in a water bottle instead of its properly labeled container. Then uh, that's one hazard, okay? And then the second hazard could be a biological hazard. It could be um, syringes lying uh, next to the playground. Yeah, let's say you've got an on-site <laughs> playground or something for kids. Then, um, you know, maybe it's you own a school or something like that, possibly you work in a school. 
yeah, and the syringes lying there. So that's a biological hazard. So, so we now have three hazards for fire, and then you have two hazards for hazardous substances. So that's two categories. Yep. And remember, we said we need five, so that's two. Uh, and then we said we need ten different hazards. Yep. So that's uh, the two two hazards we had here. So it was the syringes and the bottle, and then the three fire hazards. So that's five in total already. So that's five out of ten completed already. I, I do do recommend to try and go for some more, maybe fifteen or thirteen. Yeah, more than ten. Okay, uh, and I'll explain why very very shortly. So that's this is very important. This list, to be honest, I would I would actually write these categories down on a piece of paper, list them. Yeah, these are not really listed the way I would like them listed. So maybe noise under noise, you write vibration. Radiation is another category. Anytime you see, you see that. Okay, that's just to break it up. So these are all categories. So alone here, uh, we have one, two, three, four, five, six categories, and that's an element five in the book. Six alone, just from that one element. Okay, uh, element ten in the book, your NG two book, fire. Element eleven, electricity. Okay. That's just some examples, but I'd write them down or even print this page off, okay? Because this is very important. If you get the category wrong, you make up your own category. You don't word it the way Nebosh word, word it, then you might fail just because of that. So this is why you need to be very, it's very, very important. Pay attention, attention to detail, okay? Always give yourself time to look at the most important things like the guidance, the categories. Read it over, write it if you have to. If it helps you remember, okay. This will actually talk you through the risk assessment steps, which I'll cover in a second. But it's actually easier to use the real template to show you a visual rather than reading through all this, okay. There we go. Uh, and there's just an example. That's not the template I'm going to run over. I'll run over a different one, okay. That's just one page. I think, yeah, it's just one page they've put in the book, okay. So what I'll do is I'll just open up, I'll just show you the template that you're going to look look at, okay? So risk assessment part two, okay? So if you're using your, if it's the document I've sent you by email, it's not the NEBOSH example you want to look at, it's the NC skills example, document for NC skills example risk assessment. Okay, quite simply because the Nibosh example, this column is quite brief. Yeah, it's quite vague, the actual Nibosh version. Uh, I'm not too keen on it. So uh, I still use the Nibosh version for parts one, three, and four. But for part two, I like to use this uh, as an example. Okay. Um, but yeah, before I run through um, covering all of this, okay, which is in the kind of uh, the next part of this video which is merged to this one just remember one one point I do want to mention is here what are you already doing recently we've actually had some people and um, because this was left blank there was nothing typed in here they did they failed the risk assessment so now you strangely enough you actually have to put the words in the actual words here nothing currently in place or no control measures in place something along those lines okay so just let them know there isn't anything in place so it's a bit of a strange one but yeah so we've had students failing in the past just because of that you know the risk assessment is fantastic but the um, one hazard they missed this out and the whole thing failed okay just to give you an idea and, and how strict they are okay so that's just uh, the example which we're now going to to make a start okay so this is basically your part two that you should be looking to complete first of all okay It'll make life easier, it'll make, make part one a lot easier to actually write about, okay? So just to show you this, the left hand column, we have hazards, hazard category and the hazards, okay? Who might be harmed and how? Uh, you should already know these steps to risk assessment if you've done your NG1 part of the course, which we rec should recommend that you do first. Uh, if you don't have experience of risk assessments, then yeah, definitely do it first, okay? Uh, then you write down what controls you already have in place and then what further controls or actions are required. Okay, and then we have time scales for further actions to be completed and the person responsible 
for actually signing off or, or actually completing that, that uh, control measure. Okay, so there we go, this is just an example. So we have slips and trips as your hazard category. Okay, and we have the, the actual hazard within the slips and trips category is loose paving slabs and potholes throughout the premises. Okay, and then we have another slips and trips which is debris on the ground. Okay. Then we have hazard uh, hazardous substances. Uh, you'll see how I've laid it out. I've just put the hazard category in bold, the hazard type. Uh, and they're talking about biological hazards here in relation to rodent feces. Okay. And then we have hazardous substances. You could put down chemical if you want, a chemical related hazard, but they've put down um, this discarded drug paraphernalia, so that'll more than likely be syringes. Um, that's, uh, yep, sorry, syringes, yep, so he's got needle stick injury there. So that'll be for your, your hepatitis B being your, um, uh, that's just an example, hepatitis B. It could be HIV uh, being your, your, um, your, your biological hazard. Okay. So I'll just scroll back up, okay. Who might be harmed and how? Okay, it's not just it's not just who might be harmed, how might they be harmed, okay? Very important. This this bit's very important. Okay, you put down the categories of people that are likely to be harmed, okay, and how are they likely to be harmed? Okay, and, and examples of different types of injuries. So these people could be what could be at risk when walking in the car park, okay? Cuts, bruises, broken bones, I want tight, different types of injuries, okay? Uh, it's very common to look at risk assessments and all, and, and after doing a two-week course, a uh, new Bosch course, they put down, it could result in injury. It could result in illness. Well, the question is, is what kind of injury? Yeah? Um, it doesn't have to be exact injuries, just give examples. Whether it's a, a broken, broken arms, broken bones, uh, uh, lacerations, uh, the type of injuries that are likely to be received by that you know, falling over or, or that type of hazard. Okay, so it uh, could be at risk when walking in the car park. Uh, cuts, bruises, broken bones and sprains may happen by tripping over potholes uh, or, or loose damaged paving. So that's basically how, they could, how that hazard could affect them with some examples of injuries as well. Okay. Um, this person's put in that they don't have any controls in place at the moment. Uh, but very important is the next column, what further actions uh, or controls are required. Okay, so very important. What you need to do is make sure that you deal with that hazard right away. Okay, there's no point in putting down, um, let's say, repair the slabs and the, the full car park with a time scale of three months. Well, think of the amount of injuries that you'd receive in the three months because you've not actually dealt with dealt with it right away. Okay, so what's your immediate interim control measure? Close off the car park. Uh, sorry, it's not close. Uh, close off the car park. Uh, temporary cones, barrier tape, etc. Okay, uh, uh, they've already got it in storage one day. Okay, or, or a few hours. It's up to you. This is just an example. Okay. Um, Rear car park to, to, by the time they get fencing in, they need to buy in fencing so they can actually fence off the car park completely because it's that bad. Okay. Uh, three days. Full rear inside of the car, mark, car park to be uh, fully tarmacked three months. Okay. But the key thing is nobody can get into that area. Okay. So you're not going to have people injured within that three months. Hopefully not because it's closed off altogether. Okay. So once you've fully tarmacked it, now do you have anything in place to stop it from happening again? Uh, or to identify other hazards that exist in the car park? You need to be looking at management measures, whether it's uh, doing regular inspections, uh, supervisors doing spot checks, uh, for other for other controls or other hazards, uh, not specifically this one, there's things like training, there's supervision. You've got to look at these kind of control measures as well, okay? But the key thing is you want to prevent reoccurrence. Uh, if you don't have an inspection regime in place, then it's not, a, it could be a year later, next winter, for example, more potholes appear and there's no inspections taking place and so nobody notices it and then people start falling again, okay? So we need to, to kind of maybe doing looking at inspections and stuff like that as well. Okay. 
and then we have the time scales here make sure it's all nicely lined up that that control measure has a time scale next to it and right next to that is the person responsible for uh, sorting it out okay each control should have somebody uh, responsible for sorting it out okay and uh, Nibosh can be quite picky on this so make sure you have a time scale for each control and a person responsible for each control okay so that's just a that's an example there of how this part of the risk assessment should look okay uh, and uh, obviously if it's only my internal students that will get access to this um, but uh, the Nibosh example is very similar the Nibosh publish and they provide that to course providers and then your course provider should give you an example of the Nibosh risk assessment okay there we go. I think my student only put 10 hazards in okay what I would suggest um, is to put more than 10 hazards in as I say um, more than 10 hazard 10 hazards and then more than five hazard categories so let's say you have 15 hazards and eight categories yeah make sure you've got more okay uh, we did have a student uh, when it came to his last hazard he did not he left this column blank okay because he left this column blank that meant that this was not marked okay okay fantastic hazard but it was not marked which meant he only had 10 hazards uh, because this was not marked he ended up with nine hazards it was an absolutely fantastic risk assessment but because he only had nine hazards because of this column wasn't filled out he failed okay so it's a case of if one thing's missing then uh, you, you could potentially fail so make sure you have more hazards i'm not talking about 20 30 hazards just a few more maybe maybe 12 13 maybe 15 hazards okay just in case you maybe you don't document it properly or you've missed certain parts out okay so there we go so there's lots of different hazards here it's just to show you how it's all laid out okay this one was uh, fire related okay um, uh, and you can refer to the example risk assessment that Nibosh produced okay there we go so that's at the end of part two Okay, so here's just a very, very quick update video to add to this existing video. Okay, this is just in light of current, uh, not just changes, but from feedback from Nibosh. Um, these are things that are not necessarily in the guidance or in the example risk assessment. Um, however, people have, have you know, they've, they've not passed the risk assessment for these reasons. Uh, so I just need to highlight some very important things. Also things that, that we do make clear, but some people still miss them. Okay, so let me just uh, very quickly mention three things. Um, this video will be played at the beginning and the end of this video, so don't worry. If you've not watched um, uh, the, the, this, the full video that you're just about to watch, then don't worry um, if you don't understand what this means yet. You, this will be played again at the end. Okay, in the risk assessment, I'll show you a visual as well. Okay, but in the risk assessment, uh, we're going to avoid using the term immediate when we're looking at control measures. Okay, I'll explain that in a second. Uh, when you're allocating um, a control measure to a person within the organisation for them to, you know, to, to, to sign off and or to ensure that the control measure is is implemented, make sure it's if you can make sure it's not the same person. Uh, try and vary vary the person okay and i'll explain that in a second and avoid using the term periodic okay so let me just very quickly show you uh, i'll open up nc skills example okay um, i've left it with the error in it on purpose okay because um in this next video that you're just about to watch which just plays continuously from this one you will see the the slight errors okay which i'll pick up now uh, it never used to be an issue but now Nibosh, um, some markers can be a bit funny about it. And, and uh, we, we did appeal, we did pass. The students did get, gain a pass, but we don't want that delay uh, for students to get results. So if you can, not hotel manager for every single responsibility, okay? Um, facilities manager, general manager, for example, try and vary it if you can, if you have uh, a few staff in your organization okay then we have a sliding scale okay make it clear nice and clear don't write two or three months just write down you know this is what you've decided 
as your time scale. So scroll down and what I don't want to see is this immediately. Okay. Even if you put five hours down or ten hours or one day, then try and avoid using the term immediately. Okay. Uh, and this column here, okay. Let me just see. Okay. So regular weekly documented planning to be carried out. Okay. Weekly. So this is how often you want it done, and it will start in three weeks' time, okay? Don't write weekly in here. The weekly bit needs to go in here, or daily, or monthly. This is how often, okay? Don't type in periodic documented planning to be carried out. What does periodic mean? Well, you need to say how often it needs to be, okay? Periodic's too vague. If somebody's going to read this risk assessment, the hotel manager needs to ensure this is in place. We've not told them how often you want them to do it. Okay. Uh, hopefully it's been agreed. You, know, you consult with managers and you agree this together. Okay. That's just uh, three very, very important things that uh, to take note of. Thank you very much.